Hey everyone, welcome back. So previous video, we talked about how large language model can be applied in earnings transcript. And it's led by a group of researchers at UChicago that I actually took classes before. So I thought that was interesting. In this video, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into what I believe is the important part of the paper. To ensure the quality of the communication, I'm gonna keep everything light and be as less technical as I possibly can. So with that being said, let's dive right in. So this is the app that we talked about last time. You can go to this website. It's actually under the homepage of Professor Valeri's website. So you can select the company using the drop-down button. For example, Apple, select the quarter, and then select the topic. And then you can use generative AI to summarize the inside the score for you so that you can then do your due diligence, do your research, and I believe the intended audience for this application is going to be fund manager, portfolio manager, any sort of money manager who are trying to meet the deadline to write a report or reading through a huge chunk of financial documents. I believe this app can be helpful. It can efficiently summarize information for you and help you get the gist of what the earnings call is talking about. So we know that's a use case. This video, I want to dive deeper into some of the technicality of how to make this happen. So there's a link here that is about an article actually written in Chicago Bulls Review that I personally find very helpful to understand the technicality of that paper. So once again, I want to give credits to Alex Kim and Professor Valery Nikolov. I think this is a great research that they're doing, lots of novelties to apply generative AI, large language model in earnings call transcript. So the idea is to have one neural network model to take the old data, historical data, revenues, income, that sort of thing, and also to let the model, the exact same model, to accept language data, for example, earnings call. So this is actually the design that they proposed. It's actually a very common design called a Siamese network. What that means, it's a neural network right, one neural network model, like we're not talking about multiple models, we're talking about one neural network model with two inputs. So in other words, another terminology that you might have heard of is multimodal model. Uh, so this kind of falls into that category a little bit. So multiple inputs, what are we talking about? On the left hand side, maybe you have numerical variables. These are your earnings, your cash flow, uh, things on your balance sheet, things like that, fundamentals, the accounting indicators. So these are numbers, right? They are one category of variables. So we call that numerical variable. And then you have the other category of variables that are the text-based languages. Uh, these can be your MDNA section that you're reading from a financial statements, annual report, 10K, 10Q, or it could be earnings call transcript. Things that people discuss, people talk about on that earning call that may not necessarily have numbers. So those are the two groups of variables that we're talking about, numeric or contextual. So now the question is simple. How do we build a model that take both groups of input and then have the model to make some predictions? So in the end, their outlayer here has two neurons that predicts whether the future earnings is going up or down. Right, earnings is one thing. Of course, you can look at stock return. That's probably uh, another thing that's more interesting, right? So once again, based on the numerical numbers, based on the contextual numbers, what can the neural network model tell us about the future stock return going up, down, you know, that sort of thing? So that's the idea, right? But why is this interesting? Why is this the design? Why can't we just do them separately? So this is where the novelty of this paper is and why I think this is interesting. So apparently they've done their due diligence. They build two types of models. This one type of model is partially connected, meaning that you have a set of layers that's only reading the numerical input, and you have sets of layers that's only reading the contextual one. So you can color code them, the blue and the pink. And then in the end, maybe make some predictions. Now, of course, the one that they propose is you put all of them together, you let all of the neurons at every single layer interact with each other, which is what they call a fully connected. So partially connected or fully connected. And then in the end, you show the performance 
together, right, side by side. And it turned out that for earnings, a prediction for fully connected is 57%, whereas the earnings for the partially connected is only 55%. So, you know, there you go. You have like a 2% jump on your accuracy. Of course, you can show a bigger jump for cash flow and for earnings is like from 50% all the way to 53%. So you get like a 3% of jump. So something like that, it's interesting, right? What that basically means is all these arrows in the middle that's connecting two sets of network, they increase accuracy. That's essentially what that results mean. And then additionally, I found this graph very interesting. So this is actually figure 4a that's talking about the contextuality and the importance of contextuality. So this figure 4a shows the time trend in the contextuality of the accounting information. And so what that means is how important the context is at interpreting the accounting numbers. Now, how do you read this graph? Well, right off the bat, you look at the time, right? Because, you know, we're talking about time trend here. So X axis is year 1999, 2000, all the way to 2020, things like that. And then vertical axis is the percentage. Now, this percentage means that we're talking about the difference in the forecast accuracy between the fully and the partially connected models. And those models are what I just shown you previously. And you can see the difference, right? As time move on, most recently, this black line, which is, which is contextuality, is much higher, right? That difference is much higher. Whereas if you look at figure 4B, then there isn't much of a difference, right? The two lines are pretty much parallel. They go up and down together. So as a summary, what's going on here, right? In their paper, they first investigate whether MDA discussions around the earnings numbers can help investors interpret these numbers. They take advantage of a neural network. They take advantage of a large language model called BERT. And that's how they're able to build this multimodal structure, right? You have input from both numerical variables as well as text variables. And then they show that, okay, if you look at the context in MDNA, you have a better accuracy of predicting future earnings. And then on top of that, they provide the contextuality of the earnings. That's also important. In other words, they show evidence suggests that the MDNA report are becoming more and more relevant for the decision makers, which also indirectly show that whatever the SEC is doing improves the quality of the financial standards. So one last thing I just want to mention is I think there's a lot more to be done based on this research. Right off the bat, I can think of, hey, why don't we come up with some sort of portfolio arbitrage? You use some sort of large language model, process the context of the earnings transcript, the MD&A section of your financial reports, and then you can get some sort of consensus, right? Some sort of sentiment analysis to rate how the market reacts to what is being discussed in the earnings call transcript. And then you can probably build a model to see how you can make a prediction of future stock returns based on the context. And since you have that forecast of future stock return up or down, right, that gives you the probability, use that probability to sort your stock universe, and you buy the top quintile, short sell the bottom quintile, and you make a portfolio arbitrage. Now, of course, I'm saying this right now, I'm sure some people out there has probably already done it, and we'll have to wait to see if anyone can successfully publish a paper in that arena. So with that being said, hope you like it, and I'll see you in the next episode.